So far, we have discussed bulk recombination and surface recombination. When designing a solar cell, we want to keep all these recombination processes to a minimum. In order to do that, we need to be able to measure the effect of the recombination mechanisms that are present in our material. The most straightforward quantity that characterizes the recombination processes is the lifetime. The lifetime, in turn, is determined by the different processes and dependent on the injection level. The subject of this video is the injection-dependent lifetime. First, we need to understand how the carrier lifetime is related to the different recombination mechanisms. As a reminder, the lifetime of a specific recombination mechanism, tau i, is calculated by dividing the excess minority carrier concentration by the recombination rate ri. So how do we find the total lifetime? Let us consider again the recombination mechanisms that may act in the bulk of the semiconductor. For the semiconductor bulk, we have identified three different mechanisms. Radiative recombination, Auger recombination, and shockley reed hall or SRH recombination. For each recombination process, we have worked out the recombination rate, and here you see the rates for holes in n-type material under low-level injection. Important to notice is that the rates are proportional to the excess hole concentration P minus P0. We have considered surface recombination also, and in that case the recombination rate Rs is proportional to the excess hole concentration at the surface of this n-type material and to the surface recombination velocity Sr. In order to understand how the different recombination mechanisms contribute to the total recombination, we consider this bucket that is filled by the tap. The tap is the equivalent of the generation of charge carriers, and obviously when the bucket is full, it will overflow, and the overflowing water can be considered as the recombination that balances the generation. Now we have several me recombination mechanisms acting at the same time, like Auger and radiative recombination that are always present in any material, but also SRH and surface recombination. With the right processing technologies, we are able to minimize SRH and even surface recombination. The total recombination rate that the carrier's experience is of course the equal to summing up all individual rates. As the rate of each recombination mechanism is inversely proportional to its associated lifetime, it follows that the total lifetime can be calculated with the following equation, which results in this expression. This expression shows that the mechanism with the shortest lifetime dictates the total lifetime of the carriers. Now that we understand how the lifetimes of the different processes are related to the total lifetime, we will analyze the dependence of this total lifetime on the minority carrier concentration. This minority carrier concentration is injected into the system by a generation process, in our case illumination, and usually is referred to as the injection level delta P. We now look at the total lifetime and identify which processes influence the total lifetime if we change the minority carrier concentration. The radiative lifetime is independent of the carrier concentration as we have seen earlier for the crystalline silicon and is very long. Therefore, we do not need to consider this term when varying the injection level. Likewise, the lifetime for SRH recombination is also independent of the injection level, as in a very pure semiconductor there are very few defects. Thus we also do not need to take the lifetime for SRH recombination into account when considering the injection level dependence. Finally, the lifetime associated to surface recombination is also independent of the injection level and does not need to be taken into account when looking at the injection level dependence. We are left with the lifetime for
for Auger recombination. For the Auger recombination mechanism, the rate is given by this expression. If we now calculate the lifetime, we obtain the following expression in which we can see a clear dependence on the carrier concentration. When plotting the total lifetime as a function of injection level, we obtain the following graph. Obviously, at low minority carrier concentration, the lifetime is constant as at these levels, the lifetime is dominated by SRH or surface recombination that does not depend on the injection level. However, for high injection levels, the lifetime drops rapidly as in that range, Auger recombination dominates. We can explain this by the fact that at higher concentrations, more particles are in each other's vicinity, which increases the probability for a three-particle process like Auger recombination. So at high injection levels, Auger recombination is dominant and reduces the lifetime. This is an important conclusion and is a property of any semiconductor. So far we have only looked at the theory. If we examine a real measurement, the situation is somewhat different. In this graph you see a measurement taken on a crystalline silicon wafer of which the surface is passivated. Obviously for high injection levels, so for when the minority carrier density is large, the lifetime drops as a result of Auger recombination. In this case we see that for lower injection levels the lifetime slightly drops as well. If we carry out this measurement on a wafer for which the surface is less well passivated, by which we mean how much the surface defect density is reduced, the drop in lifetime for low injection levels is more profound as shown by the green curve. We now observe that in reality the lifetime increases with injection levels depending on how well the surface is passivated, in contrast to the theory presented earlier. The explanation for this ob observation is beyond the scope of this course and video, but to lift the veil a bit it is due to the fact that the surface recombination velocity appears to be proportional to the injection level. In turn, this dependence is due to the complex properties of the defects at the surface and band bending resulting from space charge regions near the surface. In summary, we have seen that the total recombination rate can be described as the sum of the recombination rates of all recombination mechanisms. As a result of this, the inverse of the total lifetime is therefore equal to the sum of the inverse of lifetimes of the individual recombination mechanisms. We found that the lifetime is dependent on the injection level for Auger recombination process only. However, I showed also that in reality a dependence of the lifetime on the injection level has been observed when the surface recombination varies with injection level.